What's up guys, Derek from MorePlates.com. Today we're gonna be talking about an example of a perfectly laid out carnivore diet. So I am not going to argue for or against the, uh, the carnivore diet in this video. I'm not gonna say, you know, you should do it or you shouldn't do it. The point is I've been following the research on it and the anecdotal logs on it because it's highly interesting to me. Like, you know, probably as to many of you, although, you know, everyone's gonna be a bit, you know, skeptical as am I, however, I have been following a certain individual, uh, Dr. Paul Saladino, very closely. And the problem with the carnivore diet, aside from it just being what 99% of people are doing is they're just eating muscle meat all day. And they're doing, they're calling it a carnivore diet. But the fact of the matter is probably severely depriving yourself of certain micronutrients and certain things that you probably need. I'm not going to say you do or you don't because there's no way to actually 100% quantify this myself nor is there, you know, clinical studies to reference somebody eating a muscle meat based carnivore diet versus like a nose to tail carnivore diet. But in general, from what I've seen, the way most people are doing it is not the way you should be doing it for optimal health outcomes. And there's a way to still avoid, you know, the autoimmune response that you would get the whole point of most people doing the carnivore diet is to, you know, fix an autoimmune issue or to get rid of some sort of you know, ailment or some sort of flare up that was caused by, you know, uh, an allergen or some sort of like autoimmune response to some food group in their diet or something along those lines. Some people are forced to try this diet and it's essentially just an elimination diet of sorts for the majority of people. And that's why it works so well. But as a long term, like sustainable practice, that's going to be healthy. The difference of what Paul is presenting versus what 99% of other people are presenting in terms of what is healthy carnivore. It took me a while before I saw like an exact straight up example of what is a healthy nose to tail carnivore diet. Cause usually you just see people talk about, I ate a steak for breakfast, I ate a steak for lunch and I put salt on it. It's like, okay, I'm not trying to eat a muscle meat, you know, based diet here. How do I actually do this the more healthy way? And the way Paul lays it out is extremely convincing. He does a nose to tail approach where he actually gets, you know, organ meats in. He actually has a, um, a ton of collagen from the parts of the animal that otherwise go completely neglected. There's important portions of the nose to tail diet, you know, model that are completely neglected in the muscle meat, you know, carnivore subsection which is like the majority of the carnivore dieters to be honest so you know i've listened to a ton of these podcasts and this is the first time i've seen him just straight up say not why there's benefit to doing nose to tail not why nose to tail is superior not what you know certain things do and certain things don't do like he just straight up laid out exactly what his diet was so i thought you guys might find this interesting for those who are looking for the healthiest way to go about carnivore I'm not going to say you should do it or you shouldn't do it, but if you do do it, the way to do it, I do not believe is eating steaks all day. I don't think that's the healthy way to go about doing it. I think the way Paul's going about it is much better. And I'm just going to tell you exactly what he eats so you can get a much more clear idea of what a, you know, like perfect carnivore diet looks like. So basically, obviously macronutrient allotments are going to differ based on an individual's, you know, energy expenditure needs, how, like, what, how intense their exercise is you know, how much uh, weight training you're doing, your body composition, if you're a male or female, all these, you know, height, weight, blah, blah, blah. But just in general, just, you know, look at the food groups and the quantities he's using related to his body and then kind of like, you know, extrapolate that for yourself. So he says he usually has two meals a day during a time restricted window of eating because he finds the meals are so filling, which, you know, I'm sure that is often the case for people who aren't slamming sugar, less insulin, less glucose spikes, less, you know, cravings and, you know, inability to adhere to a strict uh, caloric allotment. So more satisfying, less, uh, you know, fuckery with your, you know, glucose control. So following his general template, he says he'll do this in general, but he will add in a variety of organs and other meats from time to time. So included in this, he will sometimes add in bone marrow, salmon eggs, seafood, scallops, kidneys, lamb testicles, and some other things that are kind of like one-off things that he'll add in once in a while. But as far as the diet itself, that's like the base 90% of the time or whatever, the majority of the time, it looks like this. First thing in the morning, he has a large glass of water with electrolytes, which is comprised of two to three grams of sodium chloride with magnesium and potassium. Three duck egg yolks, specifically duck egg yolks, five ounces of liver, eight to 10 ounces of grass-fed meat, 
100 to 150 grams of grass-fed fat trimmings from the animal, and it still has the connective tissue, which is rich in glycine to complement the methionine found in muscle tissues. And then he's very generous with his salt consumption because most people are actually restricting sodium way too much. As far as his lunch, he has three duck egg yolks, eight to 10 ounces of grass-fed meat, 100 to 150 grams of grass-fed fat trimmings from the animal again, for the same reason, has connective tissues, which is rich in glycine to complement the methionine found in muscle tissues. And this is something completely overlooked by people who are doing the meat only approach. They have none of this in their diet to complement the significant amounts of methionine they're taking in. And they don't consider this ratio whatsoever. And it's, you know, one of the pitfalls of the standard approach to the carnivore diet, in my opinion, is one of the main reasons why I'm presenting his approach to you guys right now. Also, you know, a lot of salt based on I'm assuming salt to taste based on his liberal use of it is basically what he says, liberal salt consumption. And at the end of the day, he'll have some sort of calcium source and that will be either bone meal or eggshell. So like I've listened to so many of these podcasts now, and this is the first time I've had, like I've heard him as well as other people talk about why you need to eat nose to tail, the difference in terms of nutrients, you know, what's comprised of all the micronutrients you need, how you're deficient. If you just eat the, you know, muscle meat only. And then there's like the 99% of other carnivore guys who are like, this is why, you know, just eating meat is fine. They're obviously less, you know, scientifically educated they're obviously less aware of the potential ramifications or you know negative downsides of their diet they're just looking at it from a how the, it makes them feel they don't do as much research as somebody like paul but with that being said you know i'm not going to say you should be doing either of them i'm just saying if you're gonna do it this is the way he does it and he's probably the most intelligent carnivore proponent that i've seen so far like by far and the guy has a very firm grasp around the lack of you know holes in the diet like the thing's pretty rock solid if you actually listen to his argument on it his blood work looks good and he's addressing all of the major issues that are present in the meat only approach so anyone who's having you know steak for breakfast steak for lunch steak for dinner with salt you know any and all issues that they could, you know, potentially run into, he's essentially addressing with this nose to tail approach. And obviously there's still going to be, you know, things people poke in that and the lack of plants people are going to have an issue with. People are going to have a lack of fiber, lack of this, lack of that. Obviously there's conflicting arguments on both sides of the spectrum for that. But just in general, if you're going to be doing carnivore, that's all I'm saying. I don't even do carnivore. Maybe I'll try in the future. I don't know. But I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, I would highly recommend you follow his approach and, you know, like the liver, the connective tissue, like that kind of stuff. That's stuff that no one's doing in the carnivore community. They're just straight up eating fat like steaks and that's it. And they're severely throwing off ratios in their body and depriving themselves of things that they would otherwise need for optimal health outcomes, in my opinion. And I just want to present that information to you guys because... People dig around for hours in these podcasts and not find a straight answer for what do I eat? And just finally hearing him straight up lay out, I eat this, 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 and this quantity, and this quantity, and this quantity. It's just like, finally, somebody has finally <laughs> given a concise and like clear answer on this. Because a lot of the science is stuff that if you're just getting into this, you don't necessarily want to sit through like 40 hours of podcasts to extrapolate what you think is a correct carnivore diet. You just want it given to you and then you can kind of like go you know, research why thereafter and see kind of, okay, why is this here? Why is this here? But it's like, if you're in the dark constructing your own diet based on like absolutely nothing, obviously it's a bit, you know, intimidating to say the least, because you're doing a diet model that is essentially going against the norm here and no one's doing this really. So having this laid out, super helpful. And I hope it, uh, you know, clarify some things for you. If you're going to go about the carnivore approach, hopefully this helped you. I would definitely check out his content if you're thinking about doing that. If you have a current autoimmune issue, especially, I think it's definitely worth checking out. And uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. I'm checking me out on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates. Sign up for my newsletter in the link in the description below. The incentive there is all my videos that I post are talking on the fly. Anytime I reference a clinical study or a trial or anything, they're linked in the article. They're not going to be linked in the videos. They are also organized by subsection. Very concise and easy to digest subsections with a table of contents to break each one down for you guys. So then it's not just me rambling. It's actually my thoughts kind of gathered into a professionally laid out 
format with all the links that you would need to any clinical study you want to delve into further yourself. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.